everybody, Dr. Jamie here, and you are about to listen to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I hope you enjoy the tips and advice in this segment. Hey everyone, Dr. Jamie here with the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience, and today I have with me Debbie Lundberg. She is a returning guest with Presenting Powerfully, DebbieLundberg.com, and we just got done with a full 60-minute episode on how to present yourself, how to network, and we even talked about slobification and Lundbergisms. You've got to catch the episode uh, to hear what slobification is. It is awesome. Um, But today on this audio, we're going to chat a little bit about networking. Since so many people have so many questions about what do I do when I network? How do I network? When do I arrive? What do I do when I enter a room and I don't know where to break in the conversation? So she is going to give us all the tips today, right now. Debbie, welcome back to the Dr. Jamie Show. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yeah. Okay. So I guess the question is, why is networking so important to begin with? Networking is so important because people do business with people who they like, admire, trust, and respect. And if we don't meet them, we can't like them, we can't respect them. So when we network, if we think about who can I connect with, so less of that business card exchange and more of the who can I connect with, networking is a huge priority for anybody who wants to grow as a person and grow their business. It's the foundation for building a relationship and ultimately that's what can turn into business, right? Absolutely. Okay. Um, So what is the most important thing to do prior to going to a networking event? Be interested in being at the event. Number one is the most important thing is know that you're going to be present while you are there. And if in addition to that, I could add a couple of things, yeah. it's it's know the audience, find out if you can, can get a list of people who are going to be there and do your research. Come prepared, not just about yourself, but about others so you can really engage with them instead of just explaining yourself. Being at the event is so important, both physically and mentally. I think we spend our lives being elsewhere all the time mentally. I mean, even if we're at the oven stirring pasta, we're thinking about tomorrow or earlier in the day, we're never actually present in the moment. So that is actually a skill, uh, Mm -hmm. being there at the event. Um, Okay, so what are some common mistakes that people make when networking? Unfortunately, people think of networking as doing it when they need something or need a job or, and and that's, that's the biggest mistake is you network all the time. It's consistent. If you're engaging with neighbors and friends and you're truly sincere about wanting to know about them, that's networking. So mistakes people make are thinking it's something you do for a job only or that it's a requirement, that networking is checking a box, getting names and contact information. And people think that networking is something that also, some people think they don't need it, Dr. Jamie, yeah. which is another mistake people make. I don't need that. I have a job. I have friends. Well, really, could you enhance them? Could you introduce your colleagues and friends to other great people? So let's let's remember that networking is one of many ways of building rapport relationships and growing ourselves and our businesses. Yeah, networking is more than just going there and getting business for yourself. Sometimes you're an expert and known for the ability to foster relationships between people. People come to me all the time, Jamie, do you know this person? Jamie, can you connect me? Um, And I like being that go-to in that respect because then when they're, oh, I need a coach, I'm top of mind Mm -hmm. because they already use me for those types of things. Um, Okay, what do you recommend on timing for an event? So uh, when should we arrive, when should we leave, et cetera? Well, if you're not sure, ask the host because unfortunately sometimes invitations aren't clear. When we host events, when I host events, I let people know there's a 15 minute range of arriving because what time we're going to start. And if it's a, if it's a go as you flow type of thing, which would be more of an open house or not. But if it's not clear and you get an invitation for something from 6.30 to 8.30, check and ask, is there a presentation? Is somebody speaking? What time will that be? Because you don't wanna walk in during that. If you're unsure, plan to go at the beginning and that means get there early. Because when you're there early, number one, you're comfortable. Number two, you get a good parking spot. Number three, you can see who's attending. And number four, you can greet people. And yes, even if you're not the host or hostess, do greet people, welcome them. And then you have a chance to meet everyone as opposed to coming in later and trying to find people. If it's really open, 
and it's a short amount of time. Think you want to go if it's a two hour event, be there for at least a third of the event so that you don't look like you're just flying in and flying out to see who's there just just really quickly. Now, if it's a longer, say four, six hours, something like that, then be there for at least an hour because that way you let the host know, make sure you go up to the host, thank him or her or the, the group of people. And if you're not able to, when you leave, make sure you've already done it. And then if you do use social media, like most of us do, post something positive about the event because then people know you appreciated it and you can you can get all of that packaged packaged into it about the time and how much time you're going to be there. Something else regarding time is please don't tell people that you're quote unquote busy or that you're going somewhere else. Be present, like Dr. Jamie, you were saying earlier, make sure you're there. And then when you leave, you can think about the next place. Excellent. I love it. And speaking of social media, um, everyone, you have got to listen to the full 60 minute episode um, on the Dr. Jamie show with Debbie because she talked about when we get all those Facebook uh, invites to different parties and events, how do we respond to them? Yes, no, maybe find out on that episode. It is a great response. And thankfully, I know I'm not a slob of facator. I don't know if that's a new word, um, <laughs> but I thought I was uh, slobifying myself but now I know the way I respond is okay. Um, all right, Debbie, moving on here, is there a proper way to introduce someone? So if, if I was gonna introduce you to Joe sitting over here, how do I do that? If you were introducing me to Joe, instead of, so I'm saying, please don't do it this way, please don't say, I'd like to introduce you to Joe. That's a bunch of filler. Okay. Instead, you think of who is the higher ranking or has more more importance or more knowledge in your world. And it doesn't mean that you're saying the person's better than the other person. But let's say Joe is a CEO of a Fortune 100 company. You may say to Joe, Joe, so you would address him first and you'd say, please meet Debbie. Notice I said, please meet, mm -hmm. as opposed to I'd like to introduce you to. And then once you say, Joe, please meet Debbie Lundberg, and then you'd look back to him and you'd say, Joe, Debbie does this. And you'd say, Debbie, you may already know Joe has, is a CEO of XYZ company. And then give one or two reasons you think we would connect. And Dr. Jamie, you're great about that. So if you think of, if you said, Joe, the reason I brought Debbie over is you were asking about a presentation you had coming up and Debbie's written a book on it and is known for those things, you may get a couple of tips or tools from her. And Debbie, you'd mentioned that you, have this XYZ product, which is part of their portfolio. You already have things in common. And then you can walk away. That way you're not there attempting to facilitate it or you haven't given them anything to go on. Now they have a point of con connection and conversation. And possibly business. And that was a great business. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, my final question for you, I know all the viewers, uh, I'm sorry, all the listeners uh, on the audio here would want to know this. So they walk into a networking event, they've got great intentions, but everyone is talking. They walk in, how do they break in and start talking when everyone's clustered and clicked together and they are solo? Sure. First of all, feel good about yourself. Before you walk in, get your shoulders back. Make sure everything is, is in order and feel good about how you're presenting. Smile, walk in, and approach a group of two or three people. And then smile if anyone looks up at you right away. Smile, nod, wait till a break in the conversation, and then use that smile. Put your right arm out there. You have your name tag on your right side. You introduce yourself and there goes the conversation. Now you can jump in and you're part of the group. Now knowing other people will come in, keep that in mind and if you see someone else walk in, nod to them or invite them over so they don't have to go through that same experience. Excellent. And we talked about on the show too, it's okay to be a little bit shy. It's okay for things to feel awkward a little bit here and there. Eventually you'll warm up and come around um, to how to network successfully and feel confident doing it. Um, but just get out there and do it because networking really can build your business, help you build relationships, uh, make you into a credible expert. Debbie actually wrote a book on this. Debbie, share your book and also where we can find you and follow you. Absolutely. Thank you. It's called Beyond Networking 101. It's called Moving from Card Collecting to Truly Connecting. And there really are 101 do's and don'ts pre-event, during event, and post-event that will assist you in working through networking successfully and building those relationships. You can find it and everything else about me at DebbieLundberg.com. That's D-E-B-B-I-E. 
L U N D com. Debbie, thank you for joining us today. You're welcome. Thank you. Everyone, you are listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. Do me a favor. Go to YouTube, iTunes, Google Play, and subscribe to the Dr. Jamie Show. And comment below with your biggest takeaway from this particular episode. Have a great day in everything you do. Present powerfully. Thank you so much for listening to the Dr. Jamie Show audio experience. I really hope that you enjoyed the tips and advice given on today's segment. Do me a favor and go to iTunes and my YouTube and please subscribe to that channel. Every subscribe, every like, every follow helps the Dr. Jamie Show grow so that we can bring you the best guest and the best content possible. And of course, as always, if you have any feedback, feel free to leave that as well. Talk to you soon.